What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to make marker text. Alright guys, so uh, this is a style that I recently like started experimenting with and I thought it'd be fun to make a short video about how I created this. So uh, you will need an asset package for this, just saying that up front. Uh, it's available on the Dreadlap Swap Store. It's actually on a discount right now, so if you want to grab it for a 33% discount, uh, the link is in the description. All right, so the idea of this is that we're gonna make something that looks like it has been drawn with like one of these markers. I used these when I was a kid uh, for a lot of arts and crafts projects. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so the first thing I did was drag in a paper texture and you can basically drag in any paper texture for that matter. Uh, the one that I use is from the ink texture pack. Uh, it's a bonus texture. So let me just drag that in real quick. So this is a vintage paper. As you can see, uh, this is what it looks like without any adjustments. And basically what we did is we brought in the U saturation filter, which we can access by pressing control or command U on our keyboard. And we want to make this colder and desaturate a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is move the slider around until the paper gets like a kind of a blue feel. Uh, and I think something like this is fine. So at mi minus 160. And then I'll remove the saturation just a little bit so that it's a little bit colder because the paper from itself has a very warm vibe and we want to go with a cold one. And that is just because we are going to use a blue color for the text here. So if you want to have it warm and you don't have to do this setting at all. All right. So the next thing is getting our graffiti text ready. And I'm going to do that with the Subway font. I'll just type our Dreadlabs here. So uh, the Subway is a pretty cool font. You can find it for free if you have an Adobe subscription. Uh, it's basically a font that has a lot of different graffiti styles. Uh, let me just show you a couple of them real quick. Uh, so these are the options that Subway offers. And personally, my favorite is the Subway New York STD. So yeah, let's just center this up real nice. And I think I would like to have labs also with a capital. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is a little unorthodox uh, because I wanna give this a color, but I'm not gonna do it yet uh, because uh, as you probably know, in Photoshop, you can just give your text a color like this. But the first thing we want to do is basically soften the edge on this to make it a little bit more realistic. And after that, we are going to add a texture to it. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my vintage paper here to another file. Like this. We'll call this displacement map. So uh, I want to add a little bit of contrast to this. And then I'm going to do that by pressing Command or Control M on your keyboard to bring up the Curves menu. And we'll drag in this slider so that there will be more dark values, as you can see here. I will drag in the other slider as well. So basically, the difference between light and dark is a little bit bigger. Uh, we want to remove some of the detail here with a Gaussian blur. And a Gaussian blur of one, uh, probably two. Yeah, two should do the trick. And let's just save this up as a PSD file. All right. So the next part is converting this thing into a smart object which I'm gonna do by going to right click here, convert to smart object. And now I'm going to go to filter, distort, displace. And I'm gonna leave these settings as they are. And we'll load in the displacement map here. And as you can see, this gives up a little bit of edge here and there so that it's not perfect uh, in any way. For the next part, I'm going to go to filter, blur and box blur. And you can make this how big you want. I think a value of three is nice to get these edges softened up a little bit. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far. So the next part we're gonna do is give this the marker texture. And this is where the ink textures come in. So looking at this, this is the beta version of the ink texture pack that I just put out. And as you can see, we have a couple of marker textures here. Uh, for example, we have some with a thick marker. Let's just take a closer look at that real quick. Uh, basically, it's just a scanned in version of uh, a paper that's completely covered in uh, marker. So what I'm going to do is drag just one of these in. Uh, I'm just going to go with this one. Make it a little bit larger so that it covers the rest of the logo here. Something like this should be fine. And now we want to have this only cover the parts where our text is. And there's an easy way to do that if you don't know. And it's going to right click in the layer menu and click on create clipping mask. So 
as you can see, we now have this uh, clipped only where our text is, which is pretty nice. And if we zoom in, we still have a little bit of detail here from the scanner and we're gonna kind of remove those. So what I'm gonna do is go to blur, Gaussian blur here, and just do a very light and subtle Gaussian blur. I think one and a half pixels should do the trick like that. And now it's time to give this guy a color. And I'm gonna do that by making a solid color here. And I'm just gonna pick out a nice blue. And I'm also going to clip this to the text here. And I'm gonna set the blend mode to color. And you can basically uh, play around with this a little bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit less vibrant so that it looks a little bit more realistic, something like this. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is group all of these together. And we'll call this marker text. And now we want to have that like edge that happens when you uh, paint something in. Basically on the edges of text or anything that you draw with ink, there's always a little bit of a darker edge uh, where the ink stops and that's because the rest of the residue of the ink starts to build up on the edges a little bit. And we can easily recreate that with a layer style and we're going to add an inner glow. And as you probably know, uh, the inner glow and the inner shadow uh, are both available here and we wanna have darker ones. So you would probably say, why not go for the inner shadow? And the reason for that is if we look at the inner shadow section here, it's a little bit less uh, variable in options because we cannot change the, uh, what's it called? The range. So what I'm gonna do is go with inner glow. So I've reset these uh, so you guys can follow along. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna select a color, make it dark uh, probably going to do a darker blue something similar to what we have in our text here something like this should do the trick and then the blend mode will put this to multiply to make it a little bit darker and just to see uh, where we're at now I'm just gonna high, uh, make the opacity to 100% increase the size a little bit okay so now it's very uh, visible what we have here and now this basically is a uh, matter of whatever you like if this is if you like it really drastic and over exaggerated this is probably for you uh, but for me I'm going to just uh, edit some sweat settings here so if we change the range you can basically see uh, how deep you want the effect to be so the lower the range is the more it will cover and the further away the range is to more close to 100% the more subtle it will be so what I'll do is I'll increase the size a little bit and the range I'll put it to around 80% and then I can lower the opacity ever so slightly. And this creates a nice subtle edge. Uh, as you can see the difference here. Looks a little bit more realistic in my opinion. Uh, so now for the last step, we want to have this blend in with the paper here in the background. And the way we're gonna do that is by doing advanced blending. Um, advanced blending sadly doesn't work properly when you have a layer style connected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna group the marker text here. And we're going to call the next group marker blending and we're going to double click on the marker blending group here so this will bring up the layer style menu but you also have the blending options here and basically uh, the train of thought here is that we have dark text the text is darker than the background color here as you can see the paper is white almost like the lightest colors there are in photoshop and we want those to bleed through our darker text and we can do that with the underlying layer here under the blend if option and if i drag this slider in you can see that the lightest parts of the image will start blending in with our marker here and of course this looks super harsh and that's because we only have one color value but if you hold alt or option on the keyboard while sliding these you can split the slider in half so that there's a nice fade between uh, the lightest and the darkest point of the blend and in this way, you can basically tweak it so that you, you know, you can have it washed out super far if you uh, like that, like this. Uh, I want to have mine a little bit more apparent, something like this should do the trick. And then we can also lower the opacity to 90% or something like that. All right. And there we have it. So if you want to get the project file for this, uh, there's a link in the description because you can get all of the project files from all of my tutorials if you become a patron of mine. Besides supporting the channel and getting access to all of my project files, you'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, an exclusive Discord rule, and access to a lot of exclusive videos, including videos on how to create your own clothing brand. But to me personally, the patrons are very important to me because they make me be able to create these tutorials for you guys on a weekly basis. Thanks to you guys, I can keep paying my rent while also helping you with some free tutorials. 
So yeah, big shout out to all of my patrons here. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. If you haven't already, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel because it will also really help me out. And with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.